What a, a pleasure it is to be with you. Um, I'd like to just spend a few minutes to talk about the weekend and how we came up with the films that we are screening. Uh, Yiddish cinema came into being 108 years ago, 107 years ago, when uh, a very enterprising gentleman decided to record his wife on the stage, so he sat on the front row with a movie camera and recorded her. Uh, his name was Abraham Kaminsky. His wife was a Yiddish actor named Esther Rojo Kaminska, uh, who was the grand dame of Yiddish theater. You may know her uh, by, as the mother of Ida Kaminska. And uh, that's how Yiddish cinema began. It began largely as a silent uh, medium, and uh, Yiddish films were made in Poland, in Russia, both before the Soviet Union and during the Soviet Union with actual funding from the Russian Soviet government uh, and also in the United States. So that whole silent period came to an end as silent movies stopped being made <coughs> as we get to the late 1920s, around 1930, and movie makers realized that there is an audience. Who is that audience? They are Yiddish-speaking immigrants primarily, all across Europe, Sweden, and the United States. Uh, these are people who do not necessarily know the language, and it is their opportunity to be entertained in the language, uh, in, in, their, in their mama lotion. So uh, this is what happens in the early 1930s. But the quality was actually very poor. Uh, there was not enough, enough money to make films. Uh, a lot of the people involved in Yiddish filmmaking came from the theater and could not make the adjustment to making movies and directing actors, not just for the stage, but for the camera. And unfortunately, some of the great actors of the 1930s are captured on film giving in incredibly poor performances. Um, and then around 1936, uh, a gentleman who I call the Dean of the Yiddish Theater, because he began making Yiddish films, or at least silent Jewish films in the teens, his name was Sidney M. Golden, uh, is given an opportunity and a budget to make a film of some quality. Why does this happen in 1936? Because a very enterprising fellow named Joseph Green, a Polish-born Jew who went to the United States and then went back to Poland to make a film called Yiddel mit dem Fiddle, Yiddel with the Fiddle, which we are ending the festival with. He brought that film across Europe and into the United States with a very nice budget for a Yiddish film and the film made a lot of money. It was well made. It drew an audience. It got good reviews. So suddenly they turned to Golden and they said, hey, if Joseph Green can do this with Yiddel Mitten Fiddle, why can't we do it in the United States? So they went to Sidney Golden, the dean of Yiddish cinema. He had been making two, three, four terrible movies a year. And they said, Sidney, now you've got the money. Now you can do it. So do it. So what did they want to do? The jazz singer had been such a success, and it ushered in the sound era, how many of you have ever seen the 1927 silent film, The Jazz Singer? Well, if you haven't seen it, go back and look at it, because it's a film about a Jewish boy whose father is a cantor, and the father wants him to follow in his footsteps. So Golden said, if the jazz singer was so successful, let's do the same thing. That film was based on the actual life story of Al Jolson, and Jolson himself stars in The Jazz Singer. So they looked around who could fill the part. 
You have to understand America in the 1930s. You had a lot of very poor immigrants, some of whom couldn't afford to even go to the theater. So what was the second best, or in many cases, the best type of entertainment that cost no money whatsoever? You went to shul on Shabbos, and you listened to the chazan. You listened to the cantor. And as a result, some of these cantors became megastars. People would walk miles to hear Kusevitsky, to hear Hirschman, to hear Yossela Rosenblatt. And there was this young fellow, a very good-looking fellow, who finally made his way to America from Bessarabia through Canada because the United States wouldn't let him come in initially. His name was Moisha Oisha. And he was a very successful cantor in Brooklyn. So they said, Moisha, tell us your story. And they adapted that story, and that's the film we're going to begin our festival with. Moisha Oisha in Demchazen Zundel, the cantor's son. And along the way, he said, okay, you want to bring me in? You got to also bring in my wife to play a part with me. <laughs> Yiddish Akkar. <laughs> so there you have it. Moisha Oisha, Florence Weiss. In this film, you're going to see a duet, which I must tell you, I think is one of the greatest moments in Yiddish cinema. I hope you'll enjoy it. It's a vintage print. So it may look a little old to you, but let's face it, it's old. <laughs> but the Yiddish is rich and is very young. Dem chazen sundol enjoy.